Hello and welcome to Star Trek Las Vegas. I am your unofficial host, Heather Ferris, and I am with Fred and Rocky. Hello. And we are here to talk about the first and newest Picard panel. Yay! You get to watch this. This is great. Yes. Good stuff. This is a great panel. Pure That's Picard. Pure Picard stuff oh, right now. I'm so excited about this. And for the, you know, TV show, of course, too. So go ahead, watch it, and join us afterwards for our commentary, and we hope to see you then. See you soon. How's everybody doing? Hey. Woo! Nice! Oh. Nice! There you go. There you go. What do you say? That is the best. <laughs> This will be a mind uh, <laughs> exactly. and they just mind thing. You're gonna have to guess what we're minding. So let me start with this. After Nemesis, Sir Patrick said he was done playing in the car. So how shocked were each of you to hear that he was actually on board for Star Trek Picard? Jonathan? <laughs> I'm gonna, I stood right here. I, I wasn't shocked. No. Really? No. Why not? Um well, Money talks, nobody walks. No, I, I feel like Star really? Trek is too seductive to like be forever. Don't you think? Uh, they really want something that keeps them. Exactly, and the shows, it's become such a cultural, the, the franchise becomes such a cultural moment. Why wouldn't he want to jump back in? And I think they wrote in something amazing. So. Look at the house. Amazing. Wow. At least 6,000. I stood here at the wings with LeVar when Alex Kurtzman came out and said I have a surprise for you and then Patrick, the most casual sir in the planet, came wandering out in his jeans and t-shirt. White teeth, yeah. Said he was going to return. It was really, yeah. it was an unbelievable moment. It was an unbelievable And people waited 20 years for it, which was... And they, a lot of people didn't know what was happening. Right. We all scampered down from our tables because Buzz that uh, Sir Pat was in the house. Yeah, it was kind of a, it was, it was really, well I have a sentiment last song. <laughs> it was now, very moving! Now the trailer, I'm sure you've all seen the trailer, the trailer played like a movie trailer. So it's a shame if you just saw it on something small. So we're actually going to show it now, so you can see it on the big screen. You guys see it the TV monitor earlier. Uh. <laughs> Why don't you go in the audience and watch it? I heard it's really good. Go, 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 guys! sit in that crowd and watch that and hear that reaction. It, it doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that's, a, that's a pretty amazing looking trailer, I have to say. That, that looks like a feature film. That was, that was pretty cool. But Jerry, you... Casting, sir. We'll call casting. <laughs> Six four three. Call a denobulin. Call a denobulin. <laughs> Needless to say, 
And Patrick, for some reason, is crushing them. Is he not? He, his, his confidence, his ability to, uh, his vulnerability, his sense of humor, his, uh, his emotionality, his up on the surface. He's, he's, he's as great as he's ever been. And because he loves the project, and because the writing is spectacular, and the, uh, the showrunner is a, a man named Michael Shabon. Little anecdote from a conversation I had with Alex Kurtzman, who's the keeper of all things Star Trek now. We were talking about, I'm doing an episode of Discovery, and there were some questions that we talked about the Picard episodes that I had done. And then we talked about Shabon, who was becoming the showrunner, and what's going on with him, and how he's learning this job. And he said, Michael, he said, no, he said, after all, Michael is Mozart. Hmm. <laughs> That's a pretty serious compliment. So Shabon is Mozart. I didn't know he was Mozart, but apparently he, he is. You now. That's sort of like, they're like a box, that line. <laughs> Jerry, how did it feel when you were invited to visit? He's <laughs> <laughs> Mozart, yeah. actually. No, I, well, Ish. Yeah, we worked the Hollywood Bowl, actually. And Johnny was with me. And, um, one of the... Um, it's weird, Johnny. Um, one of the creators of the show, James Duff, who's another dear friend of ours, after about four glasses of champagne, he was like, well, this might, this might be the time to bring this up. So, here's what I'm thinking. And he pitched an idea, which the story is not the same story that he was originally thinking, but the character, the way he had conceived this character is, is basically what he described to me, and it sounded really cool. Um, and I thought, yeah, that, you know, it sounds fun, but whatever, this is you know, a year and a half ago, maybe, something, well over a year. And um, so I didn't think anything of it, but then every time I saw him again, he would mention it again. And then cut to about a year ago at the Creative Arts Emmy, was it last year, for the 50th anniversary, uh, and Alex Kurtzman was there, and I met him, and he mentioned it as well. <laughs> I was like, oh, this might actually, this might actually happen. And it did, and um, it's pretty cool. I was at the Hollywood Bowl too. <laughs> and after the four drinks, it wasn't eight. No. Oh. After we talked about Jerry, he, he did say, you know, would you want to come back as well? And I said, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes, he would. Yes, he would. Um, do I have to wear the makeup and the costume? Oh. And he said, I don't think you will. I said, then I really want to come back. <laughs> You will not There's have no cast. There's no cast. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, in Hollywood, you hear these things all the time, and then projects don't ever go anywhere. And so, we were very cautious, right? We're like excited, but like, let's wait and see. And, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. And then we got the calls. And then you were, you know, wardrobe fittings, and then you're getting a tour of the sets. And you're going, well, I think it's happening. I better go study my lines. <laughs> You figure out who Hughes become because it's been a long time, and I have no idea who he is now. Did 07. So, yeah, it was a it was a trippy year actually. And then you have, and then you can't tell anybody for a year. Do you know how hard that is? We yeah. knew about this. I'm the worst secret keeper ever, but I I rock that. It's more than a year that you've known. Yes, yeah. Well, I had to do it. Wasn't it? Didn't you do the interview? I had to. He did a whole like board issue. You both lied to it. I lied. And I said I can't say both anything. Face. Yeah. Okay. I both face lied. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said I'd come back, but that wasn't a lie. No, they yeah. asked. Uh, but they had asked. They had asked. I think I learned, what did I say? Never say never. I think that's right. what I kept answering. Hey. <laughs> Jonathan, it had been a good 15 I begged to come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had been a good 15 years since you played Riker. How concerned? 18. 18, all right. Well, good 15 equals 18. How concerned were you about it going in, and how quickly did you slip back into the character? I'm yet to find out. I shoot this week with the... Uh, uh, Alright, so the first part of the question, how concerned are you? More than you know. You know what <laughs> I have been... Every morning when I wake up, I've had the script for quite a while. Every morning, the first thing I do is go for my lines. Because I just... First of all, I've seen what Patrick's the shape he's in. Marina's been starring on the West End in a play, so her acting must... And I see what this acting company is like, because I just directed two of the episodes. And I was really happy as a director. I was a fine, I was a nice little actor on Star Trek. <laughs> first of all, 
I'm the third Woo! best actor in my own house. <laughs> but the show, you know, put me wherever you want. Wait, wait, wait. But it certainly wasn't Jeannie, Jeannie, and, then Jeannie and then my daughter Eliza. Okay. So I was really happy that I learned another craft. <laughs> That's been very good to me. Yeah. So I will share this. Talk to the PR people. Yes. They're Everywhere. They could be sitting right in front of you. No, oh, right here. Uh, Just between me and you. <laughs> I did play one scene with Picard already. And I won't tell you anything about it, except this. At the end of the scene, we were in three different locations. At the end of the scene, Doug Aronkanowski, Aaron the director, said, I've got to go on to the next set, and I'm going to leave you guys here with a drone. A drone is a, you know what a drone is, right? So the drone came, he said, it'll just be you guys. Or drone, or different drone. A drone drone, a drone drone, a camera drone. So the drone comes and shoots the two of us playing the scene. And off in the woods is somebody with Patrick's chair and a second AD named Alex, and uh, Patrick says, well, I think, I think we've done it, Tony. I said, yeah, I do too. So we walk. And with the, it's just the two of us. The companies and the entire 150 people has moved on to the next set, which is another part. And he said, is there anything better than spending the day with filmmakers that know what they're doing and to be, to be able to work with the people you love? What impressed you about this young new cast since you directed them? They're not that young. <laughs> They're younger than me. We're not that old. Not that new really right. They're not that young or that new. It's a very, it's a fact. experience. I've done a show with Michelle Hurd who's spectacular. Allison Pill, I had no idea. Yeah. Woo! Been, what? She's like a, uh, a violinist. She's, she can do anything. We have a new guy named uh, Evan who's from Australia who's really wonderful. And this uh, hot Santiago Cabrera is just crushing his playing. Oh, I shouldn't tell you anything about what he's doing. <laughs> so that's, kind of, that's exactly the kind of thing I get in trouble. <laughs> it's a great cast. Very good. Jerry, you had never worked with Patrick before. How was the experience for you? So it's amazing. I don't think I actually ever met Patrick once over all of these years at some event after party, like 18 years ago, something like that. Um, he's lovely. I mean, and I, I know most of the Next Gen cast better than I know my own cast. I mean, I know these guys so well, and I've seen them at so many shows over the years, and we hang out, and, um, so it's funny that I know so much about him, and I know him from the periphery. Um, but he's lovely. He's just lovely, and of course he's an incredible actor. I said to Patrick, how did that work with Jerry's? He's marvelous, Johnny. <laughs> So, she's so present. I do very present. You. you know, I, I work with Patrick. Why is Brent not here? Oh. Yeah. He does the Patrick Stewart impersonation. Send it away to me. Yeah. I'm saying about Patrick. Uh, when I worked with him, I was very young, and obviously, I just became a big fan. I mean, I, to get to work with him in your twenties, you're like, whoa. And then go see all the plays. And so coming back to the role as an, an adult <laughs> and getting to spend, I got, I got, honestly, the entire job has circled around for me. Uh, no offense to anyone else. The amount of weeks I've had to have to have one-on-one -on -one scenes with Patrick, and had time to spend hanging out with him, and talking, and getting to know him, and our shared love of rescue pit bulls and food and wine. Yeah, I just. Uh, I adore him, and so I, for me, the job has been, the gift has been to get to work with Patrick for me. So. And then Jerry, you're, you've been working for years since you played Seven. How interesting, challenging was it to go back and revisit her after all, all those years period, and then all those years of more experience that you're now bringing to the role as an actor? Honestly, it was freaking terrifying. And these two can attest to that. True, true. <laughs> because they both true saved time. my ass. Where's the voice? Where's her voice? There you go. She was telling me about that. I was freaking out. I knew, okay. She was a 
very specific character for four years on Voyager. And there was a lot of growth, and there was a lot of, you know, all of that, because she went from being a machine to learning to be human. But particularly in the way she moved and her voice, that was what, was what I was really hanging up on, because her voice didn't change that much in four years. So she still had a very stilted, very formal, very stylized way of speaking at the end of Voyager. And when I got the initial script, and I knew from the initial pitch when James had told me, you know, a year and a half ago, that she's not the same seven, she's much more inhuman and much whatever, she's been on Earth for a long time and she's been through a lot. But when I saw that initial script, and you know, you saw her, what the hell are you doing? I mean, you know, she's, it's but very, 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 very different voice. And that was what was freaking me out. So I had my friend, like Johnny said, because he started working before I did. And he was like, hey, once you get the costume, that, that'll help you, because it helps you. It does, and it helps you, it informs the way the character moves and the way the character stands and, and that kind of thing. But I was having a really hard time with her voice. I just couldn't hear her in these lines. I couldn't find it. It was really freaking me out to the point where my husband was like, I've never seen you get like freaked out about a script ever. <laughs> um, and so thank God, this one was directing my first two episodes and Johnny worked before I did. So he had just gone through all this himself and I was literally freaking out. <laughs> Bursting into tears. I don't know what her voice is. Something wonders come out. <laughs> so Johnny came over and we ate lunch and he sat down with me and we read the script for like an hour. And finally he just added because I just I was I think I was just so freaked out that I couldn't even think clearly about it. Because finally after like an hour he goes, Okay, how about this? Just try this. What if? Because okay, I can't get things what? <laughs> Because this is the way it's only a few people. Just go ahead. <laughs> on Twitter, as we speak, waiting for the um, spoiler. Um, okay, uh, let me let me figure out how to say this without getting in trouble. Um, the tone of the show is a little bit more modern and, and, and more like a movie now. It is. Yeah. But also, the Borg have always been hated. They're universally hated because they were, you know, right. faggots. They were tough. But. There's, you know, other elements in this world with the Borg, and what if she had to make the choice to be as human as possible, to survive, to sound as human, to act as human as she possibly can? Because she clearly is always going to look like a former Borg, because she's still got these implants that can't go away. Um, so what if she had to make that choice, a conscious choice, to sound and be as human as possible? And that, she was that's like, all I needed. Oh, that's I can do that. I, I was like, that's what I needed. <laughs> I just needed something for it to make sense as an actor, why she would have that huge a change. And then it made sense to me, and then I was able to do it, and then get on set. I still was freaking out my first scene, but... No, 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 no. You don't have to watch a scene. For a little while, but... She found her voice. <laughs> and she found her voice. That's the I said call Jonathan, too, right? I'm like, first of all, call Jonathan. <laughs> Now, I know you had a Borg alcove at your house for a good number of years, and Johnny just told me that you guys had drinks in the Borg alcove. <laughs> I, 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 I can't not share that with our 6,000 friends. Yeah. So please, tell us a little about partying in your Borg alcove. Well, yeah, I, I did. I mean, yeah, after four years of that character, I figured that that was the least that could give me as my alcove from the shop. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it was, it was, it was in my... It was in one of your dinner parties. Game room, yeah. the both house, and we may have... Yeah, there was amazing. nothing untoward, it was just trans people. It was just, yeah, we just happened to like stand in the board toast. Big big sure. But it was cute. Johnny, you displayed so much personality, such humanity on TNG. What was it like for you to revisit the character? Uh, like Jerry, I panicked. Uh, <laughs> well, Hugh was based on uh, something very personal for me in my 20s. I was going through a very traumatic time and I lost a loved one, and he was based on that person. So when I played Hugh, I was playing someone else, in a way, as an actor. Over the years, I've learned to use myself more and more, because that's always better if you can. And because people that knew us were writing these roles, there was a lot written into Hugh now that reflected my own personal experiences as a gay Latino male uh, in our world today and through the years of the AIDS epidemic, etc. So uh, there was a lot in the Borg experience from the end of TNG to now 
that was emotionally easy for me to connect to. However, um, there was a lot about Hugh's physicality that came from the wardrobe, which I loathed at the time, because so it was impossible to wear. And I wasn't sure how much of myself I could use, how much of the, I, I didn't want to lose the complete physicality of the old Hugh. And in a way, Jerry and I talked a lot about, like, when you're doing Star Trek, you're doing it for you guys, right? Because a general audience can watch a good performance and be like, well, that makes sense to me, but you all, <laughs> we did not want to mess it up for you. That's exactly right. <laughs> no, we, we talk like, they're going to kill us if we do that. <laughs> you know, we have to be like, true to our base, you know, our audience. They know our roles in some ways better than we know them ourselves. So I, I was in a panic. Uh, I got a tour of the set. The tour of the set gave me some great research ideas. And I researched a, hist a human historical event that it reminded me of. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, and I... You're dancing right on the edge. No, no, no. You're I've talked about... Right something. on the edge. I did research on this historical event to feed myself, and then I still didn't have it. And then when I was on set, he came to me. And uh, it was kind of a magical moment because I had shot the first scene, and I thought, oh, welcome home, Hugh. There you are. And uh, it was kind of a, a great experience, that first beat of it. And it's been a great experience all summer, to be honest. Well, building on that, you had worked with Patrick before on TNG with Jerry on, on Voyager. She also happens to be your, one of your closest friends, yes. and you are married to her manager. I am. So on a personal level, how full circle has all of this been? It's all it's the world crazy. Crazy. <laughs> We travel all, all over the world together. It's like insane. It's insane. I, I mean, think it's fabulous. It's amazing. It's, it's, amazing. It's, the best. it's a dream come true. It really is. You can't ask for it. You never ask for anything more than this. I mean, you guys, I want you to know, you guys have sustained my life for so long. You have. And my gratitude to you. No place to be in a weekend. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, certainly not with a hotel room and airfare. Uh, so and a per diem. And a per diem. But you guys, like you've been our lives for all of us. Our, our experiences around our family relationships we have as a cast really didn't come from the show. For you guys maybe, but for me it came in the conventions. So to be given kind of like an extra, like you know, five years of doing this or ten because of this. It's a great gift, so I'm <laughs> very grateful, very grateful. And then going back to the show, guys, given that every single thing is on the internet these days, how amazed are you that no one has managed to snap photos of you shot? I do I'm, not believe I'm, that they kept the secret until Comic-Con. I truly did not ever really think was, they'd be able to pull that off. I agree, and I think, frankly, they expected somebody from Next Gen, but when your face showed up, from what I gather, since I missed Comic-Con, it's like I can't was, was the highlight of the... It was. It was, correct? It, it was a... Uh, it was a real surprise. Did you say that's true? Uh, yeah. yeah. Everybody expected TNG, but it the wild part was Jerry. Yeah. How cool are you? I did go visit Jerry on set, and <laughs> Jerry had to walk around in a giant hooded cave. <laughs> Invisibility cloak. <laughs> and they hit her from locations. Honestly, it's like yeah. Harry Potter. We're not kidding. Full, full full yeah. It looked like yeah, it looked like a costume, I covered her head. My hand was yeah. covered under the things. They did that on the JJ movies also. But you know, it paid off. They covered the golf cart. I think we were on location at CityWalk at Universal Studios. Excuse me. You're trying to keep it. It's day. Behind the tram tour. Behind the tram tour. Tram. Like, right there. 
I, this is so going to get out, and it didn't. And I we didn't. weren't allowed to leave our trailer even on on stage. We, uh, once I'm in makeup, I'm not allowed to leave my trailer to go eat, like to the to the actual crew and cast meet or whatever. Because they haven't revealed, you know, the Borg's makeup, right? So they're just so secretive about it, and I think it's kind of great. Aren't surprises awesome? Jonathan, you directed two episodes of Picard. How different a style will this show have from either TNG or Discovery? And how do you, as the director, make those appropriate shifts to accommodate those differences? Good question, Ian. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Picard has been advertised as 10 movies by Patrick and Alex and all the people involved. And the two that I did were completely different stylistically and were written differently and shot differently, and therefore we, they will have, each will have their own identity. The Discovery is much more of the J.J. cinematic filmmaking, shoot to thrill sort of uh, approach, which is a blast, I gotta say. <laughs> Picard is a more thoughtful show, and uh, very elegant, and um, we still got some lens flares. <laughs> But, but it, it, it is, uh, uh, stylistically, it is driven, each, each episode is driven by, by the story, and therefore the shooting style is driven by the story. But I did want to say something, without having any NDA issues, about Picard as opposed to Next Generation and Discovery, which I was able to experience all three in, to different levels. When Next Generation was uh, coming out, if you will, it was, it was gay. It was, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> the second time I said that, you knew that that was coming. There was a, a very skeptical audience, you guys. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's sort of an understatement. Right. Hostile. You were the stepchild. <laughs> Nobody wanted to, to replace their uh, Kirk, Spock, and Bones, and I get that. And then it took three years for them to accept a, a French, bald, English captain. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was, it was about in the third season. And Discovery, which is an incredible cast and a beautiful show. They had the uh, end of all four of our shows, and then they had all of JJ's movies. And so the audience is now being asked to accept a brand new company. And again, they had to be, and they did by the middle of the first season, Discovery of one more. Picard, from what I'm feeling at all these conventions, all of you are, you know, most of you all are inclined to be looking forward to it, to be anticipating it positively, and, and the energy around wanting to like this show is very high. Yeah. Number one is now being played by a dog. A beautiful, noble, good boy, but a freaking dog. How much offense do you take to that? And be honest, no NDA here, go for it. Tell us what you really think. On the show I had always pitched was the Rikers in Space. Yes! A little half hour, single camera comedy. <laughs> With, you know, I was Mr. Troy. And, was, and uh, we had our wacky uncle Data and our little dog Worf. <laughs> they stole the idea. And now I'm number one. I thought, and after further review, it turns out, do you know who the dog is on the show? Q. Fact or fiction? to being an actor, or a gay rights activist, what has it meant to you to see sex evolution when it comes to inclusion? We've got an African-American female lead on Discovery, as well as a same-sex couple. It's got to mean the world to you. It didn't exist when you did Star Trek. Yeah, know? I mean, we always can glean from Star Trek that we existed as a gay people, <laughs> because there, there were, there wasn't, 
wonderful episode of Next Gen because I did binge the entire series. But they didn't have the guts. No, I know. That's the man in that part. But you had a wonderful outcast. Yes, yes. wonderful yes. episode. So there were. It's not where we are, where we are now. The idea that that we can see Wilson and, and Anthony in a uh, marriage relationship uh, without it being like commented on, right? That it's just there. Um, is the best of Star Trek to me. And so the diversity, the inclusion, I mean, I used a lot of my own very personal things to do with being a gay human being on Earth to play Hugh. And I'll tell you what's really kind of mind-blowing. When it was announced that I was coming back, I have gotten tweets and letters from people that came out because of Hugh. And I was like, he wasn't gay. Like, how did they... <laughs> God, I'm so gay, it came through rubber? <laughs> I'm like, what? And the kid's like, and I watched iBorg, and if little Hugh could stand up to the collective, and I could stand up to my parents, and I came out, and I was like, blown away by that. And um, I think it's because we use who we are, you know? And what a great thing that Star Trek and television and film now are allowing that story to be told, you know? Right. We can use our full selves in, in storytelling and talk about being, you know, transgender or gay or any other things that are part of our, our fabric. So, I love it. Very cool. Italian. And I've got a interesting. You're not going to ask me if he's gay now? No, I'm going to ask you again. I don't know. There you go. I try. All right. So I have a very important question for Jerry and Jonathan Delano. When was the last time you guys were on a cruise with Jonathan Frakes and Brent Spire? No. Never. But. But. Oh, but get your speedos ready, Jonathan! That's right, Star Trek The Cruise 4. Oh. We'll be there. They'll be there. Are you going to go on the cruise? I hope so. What's your favorite part of the cruise? My favorite part of the cruise? Be frank. Be frank? Uh, well, probably when you climbed the chair. No, that, that was... was no. What? It happened? He did the chair climbing the competition. chair climbing competition. That was a one-off. That won't happen again. <laughs> uh, best part of the cruise was Johnny the, Phillips. Oh, he was a riot. Yes, John. Ethan, Ethan Phillips does, does the show. bluest, dirtiest show. Does a blue show after midnight that is so incredibly inappropriate. Wait, that's an that's an option. I was asked to do something. I can do a blue show. <laughs> but talk to Johnny. The guys are here. I can absolutely. Do it. Hey, guys, you're gonna take. We're gonna play us off. Minutes. Let's get in at least a couple of fan questions, okay? Yeah. Give us five more minutes. Are we, are we good? Can I have more time? No! Power's hit me behind the curtains. Yes? How much more can I have? Five minutes. I've got five minutes. That's fans time. Come Guys, on. we all know you love them. Please just ask questions. Let's go. A quick thing. Uh, to Jonathan Freaks, I know you were a captain back in, t uh, in the last movie, fighting the captain in Gone Ship. But you are originally another captain way back a long time ago, a different genre. In fact, I got a gift for you, like I gave gift to you on, on stage. Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. I'm going to go over it. It's fine. Okay. Because you know, Ian, yeah. uh, I I'm was Captain America. Oh, oh right. Oh. I'm just protecting you. What? Wait, what? What? He was actually war Captain America. Huh? Well, thank you. Thanks for bringing this up. <laughs> Tell the story, Jonathan, real fast. I was cast. Oh, is that for me? Yeah. Uh, I'm full up. You think? Full up? I'll bring it to the photo op. Right. No, no, no. You bring it to the photo op. All right. There we go. When I first got to New York City, my buddy Charlie Davis was playing Spider-Man. He said they're looking for a guy to do Captain America. So I went over to 575 Marvel. I met Stan Lee, the late great Stan Lee. <laughs> Suit. They sent me out time to get red boots. They got me a uh, garbage can lid with a star on it. And they sent me out to open up comic book stores in Omaha. Damn, <laughs> why is there not a room to put that on your table in the dealer's room? Now, how many of those you all sell? Comic books. I did, and I wrote in. <laughs> I used to get into the rental car with the guy who picked up the airport. I get in the front of the rental car, take the garbage can lid out, gripper on the uh, Captain America things at the top, and ride into the 7 Eleven like that. <laughs> And they said, you don't even look like Captain America. But I did get to go. I love him. That's why you direct now, right? 
All right, let's go to the right real fast. I love everything about that. <laughs> Hello. You didn't know that, did you? Hi. Um, Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, thank you so very much for bringing Star Trek back to the current timeline. I've been so very hungry to see what has been new in Star Trek for years and years. So thank you for giving us the card. Uh, so, my first question, I have two questions. Just one, please, so we can get other people in too. So pick okay. your next question. Well, I guess I'm going to have to do this one if you can hold this. Uh-oh. Um, is it possible that there's going to be a Denobulan on, uh, on the new series? Is that Bill, my friend? What is that? What's going on with the show? Is that a buck? Bill, what did you give him? One dollar. In this 10 episode series, how large is Riker's role, how large is Seven of Nine's role, and how large is Hugh's role? Jonathan, show your shirt. <laughs> They're all momentarily wearing Sorry. a shirt. Can't, can't, can't touch that one. I would, say, I would say this. Size is irrelevant. <laughs> Absolutely. To our right. Thanks, Brian, for joining us. And if you could give us all the chance being a viewer or a director on the card, what is the writer's room like on the card? How do you go out developing the stories on the card? Thank you. It's a good time. Get back. Thank you. Thank you. As the director, I'm actually not in the writer's room. But I do know that the writers, one is Mozart, I believe. <laughs> Kristen Meyer is Beethoven. Nikita <laughs> Goldsmith is Schubert. <laughs> Alex Kurtzman is a... Uh, <laughs> Lennon and McCarthy. Hey, <laughs> McCarthy. <laughs> cool. I'm not in that room, I wish I were. I would have a much more succinct and informative answer. <laughs> no worries, let's go to the left. This is a question for Jonathan Frakes. Uh, I would like to know if you're aware of a recent popular internet video in which you ask a large number of questions. Maybe, maybe we have. Can you give me a commentary? And also, uh, can you recall the tallest man you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> it's a meme. I'll talk to you about it. It's sort of like, it's like Captain America. There's some things you don't know about. I'm learning so much. So very much. <laughs> all right, everybody, we've got to stop go. there. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. And we are back again. My name is Heather Ferris, and I am your unofficial host for STLB 2019. And I am joined with Fred and Rocky. And what did you guys think about that? Did you like that panel? Totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is probably the most information we get out of Picard. I know. The, the Star Trek Picard uh, all weekend. Yeah. So, yes. uh, yeah, we're into this panel. And it was really fun, too, listening to um, Jonathan Frakes talk about the uh, how they directed it and the episode and the well, introduction. Of I just Nine. liked his shirt that says NDA. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the NDA thing. Yeah. That was so perfect. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think they, they struggled a little bit because I think there was a lot more that Frakes and They the snippled other... some stuff out of it that I don't think they were supposed to talk about. Yeah. yeah. I don't, and it doesn't make any sense to us because we have no relation or no idea what but, it relates but, to. But there was a lot more that they could have told oh, yeah. us. But, oh, yeah. But yeah, because of the uh, non-disclosure agreements. So one of them was the, the uh, shooting location, right? Yeah. Because they acted after she said, said the shooting location. Yeah, they yeah. Like, they acted like they just gave us something that we should have not known about. Right. Um, so this, that was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, my actual favorite part of this entire panel was when Jay Ryan was talking about trying to figure out if she can do the board thing again. Yes. Yes. What is this woman going to sound like now that it's been 40 years later and does she have the voice? Mm -hmm. And I like, I didn't even think about this. And this is a big deal because there was a way back in the day Seven of Nine sounded and it was a very certain specific way. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm like, well, does she just talk like that all the time? And like, no, Jerry Wright, Jerry Wright. <laughs> and uh, she's she's a happening character. Uh, yes. When you see her on other shows, I saw her in Leverage several times. Totally different. Like, who is this beautiful blonde woman? She's not a Borg. She's a woman. <laughs> um, so yeah, when we see her appear in, in Star Trek Picard, it's not the same Seven of Nine. She is a little different. She's yeah. evolved a bit. And that makes sense too. I mean, it's been so long and she went to Earth, you know, she experienced human interactions and she decided based off those experiences that she needed to be more human and less bored. But I'm amazed that the the story side of it is, you know, trying to tell the, the actor side of it, how she is going to physically do it as a character. Mm -hmm. I, that she's stressed out so much over this. Yeah. Stressed out a lot. A I lot. mean, my goodness. Think, yeah. Woman, you're just the board chick. Go for it. But well, I, I think it, she, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. she was trying to reconcile in her mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the mind of, you know, Jerry Ryan, the actress, you know, like, how does it make sense for the voice of Seven of Nine to change from what we saw in Voyager to what we're going to see today? Yeah. And, and, and just, you know, the way that it came out sounded awesome yeah I mean exactly. I'm totally down with it me too and I like to also that they were saying that um, they've known about this for a year but they were sworn more than to a year yeah. more than a year yeah and it was torturous for them I they can't didn't say anything. yeah I'm like wow and they've been planning this for a while <laughs> right and, and she was actually impressed that it but it was kept secret until yeah. The trailer was released. Well, it sort of helped too that when they were hiring people, they would hire people for a lieutenant or for like some random, or not random, but not specific, you know. Oh, like title. a secret script, yeah. yeah, secret yeah. script name, yeah. Yeah. They've been doing weird scripts, you know, to audition people for ages. Yeah. yeah everybody you've been talking about, I got the script for this character, and I could tell it was probably for this person, but it didn't say that person, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they're clandestine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then the little clip of uh, data at the end there. Mm -hmm. You know, there are lots of open questions on that. I mean, is it truly, you know, data? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that was, that's been like the one, the thing was like, because yeah, I'm thinking, we don't have data anymore, right? It's been a while since I've seen the movie because I didn't yeah. like losing data. Well, someone, but yeah, we were like, well, isn't it before? Or well, like, someone was saying it might be like lore. I don't think it's lore. Wasn't lore blown away? I can't uh, see it being lore. I, so, um, yeah, so we're like, well, what's going on here? I'm sure they're just going to explain it to us. And by the time it comes out, we have all have enough time to rewatch the entire series <laughs> and all the movies, because that's what we have to do now. You know it. Yeah, we're all over it. <laughs> it, it it's not canon, but uh, shortly before the first J.J. Abrams you know, Star Trek movie came out, uh, there was a comic book a prequel that was issued. And in that uh, prequel, you know, Picard was an admiral, and Data, Data was back. Basically, in the comic book story, Data's memories had been integrated into the B4 body. So, essentially, Data was back, and, oh, okay. and, and, and he was the captain of the it's, Enterprise. It's a comic book. It's not canon, but that's, no, no. But I'm, I am biased. I am a little bit biased because I'm not really a comic book guy. Really? But yeah, I'm not really. No, I, I like the TV shows. Oh, I I love comic books. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I got nothing against comic books, but I was never <laughs> yes. into them personally. And it's a flaw. I think it's my, my parents' upbringing. <laughs> I would blame my parents. I know comic books are not high quality literature, right? Yes, they are. They are. Blasphemy. Yeah. But, yeah. That, but that's what the critics like to say. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, they don't that's, know. That's a BS. <laughs> Well, I think that does it pretty much for this panel. Yeah, I mean, we really, you know, there's not that much more to know about it. we got to wait till the show comes. Just stay yeah. tuned. They're I mean, shooting it now. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. But Coming. we get to see it in early 2020. Exactly, yes. 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 <laughs> we can't wait. Totally. So thank you guys so much for watching the panel, for watching our commentary, and join us for the next panel. We hope to see you there. Talk to you soon. Bye.